Hey guys, Isabel here. Welcome back to Railden. So this past Friday, the newest Pixar movie, Turning Red, was released on Disney+. Plus. I've waited a weekend, so, cause this is gonna be a review video and uh, the video will contain spoilers, so I wanted to give enough time for most people to be able to see the movie before they watched this video. That being said, if you haven't seen Turning Red and you're watching this right now, pause this, go watch Turning Red, come back, watch this. Because Turning Red is a really good movie and I think you guys should all see it. One thing I love about Pixar movies is that they always have a really good message and I think there are multiple messages in this movie that I think everyone should learn. And if not learn, then perhaps appreciate. So like I said, this movie was released on Disney Plus this past Friday without premiere access, which kind of leads me to beg the question, why are Pixar movies not being released in theaters? Encanto, the newest Disney movie, was released in theaters and then later put on Disney+. Plus. And in the past when COVID was at its height, movies that fell under the Disney empire were released on Disney+, Plus with premiere access. So why is Pixar seeming to get the shortest stick? And that being said, I don't actually have an answer. Maybe this Pixar studio itself wanted the movie to be released like this, I have no idea. But I personally feel like this should have been a movie theater movie, as most Pixar movies in the past have been. So, I don't know. That is my personal opinion. Again, Pixar themselves may have wanted this to be released on Disney Plus on its own thing. No idea. But basically, Turning Red is about a Chinese-Canadian teenager she's 13 not exactly a teenager but not exactly a kid anymore but basically learning to juggle both worlds and basically essentially going through magical puberty which i did think was a very funny way to incorporate that aspect of human life and it's nice to see more representation i know this movie is not strictly a chinese movie it is about a movie of growing up and that whole situation happens to happen to a Chinese Canadian girl. But you do see some cultural background and the lifestyle of someone who lives in that kind of family. My grandparents were immigrants to America, so although culturally I cannot really 100% to this, I still appreciate what it's showing. And I have many friends who can relate to this specific example. And of course there are always similarities for any family who immigrates from a different country to the North American continent. What I can relate to though is when I was 13. I think they got the characterizations of 13 year olds quite correct. I remember being 13 and being super excited that I was no longer a kid. I was finally on my way to being a teenager and I basically felt like I could rule the world. I had so much more freedom or I thought I had so much more freedom. And grade eight, man, that is very a very tumultuous time in little, little 13, 14 year old me's life. I like the animation style. It's sort of going away from the usual Pixar animation style. It's a bit more like chunky, just having a different way to represent how everybody looks and how everyone looks different and not the same like, like figure type. What I was really happy about too is how the eyebrows were animated because usually like for most animated characters, eyebrows are pretty like, pretty neat, pretty like thin you know, pretty clean looking, but all the kids' eyebrows were very like messy and just like bushy and stuff. And I really appreciate that because like kids don't wax their eyebrows until maybe like high school if their parents let them. So it's just like a very small thing, but something that I appreciated the most actually. And not everyone has perfect eyebrows. Not everyone has to have perfect eyebrows. So I'm just glad that a kid's movie is showing that. I like this movie also because it had, I think a good representation of like first generation. In my case, I would be American, but in May's case, she is first generation, I believe Canadian, cause she's in Toronto, but first generation children essentially. And them finding the struggles and challenges of being able to balance both worlds because obviously their parents are still kind of set in like where they're from their culture and everything but they the kids are in this new world and they are trying to fit into the new world and you know it's an exciting new place and you know there's a lot of differences that they have to figure out where do they fit in 
in this in these two different lifestyles essentially and we just have to take a moment to appreciate the in sync and backstreet boy vibes like the boy bands we just got it we just got to take a moment thank you watching the movie it was just kind of fun to like reminisce being that old i remember when may she's like drawing one of the four town boys and she's drawing him muscular with the arms and the abs i used to do that sometimes and the way she drew the muscles was exactly how i used to draw muscles on people not very realistic but the only way you can think to just like make like curves where the lines should be for arms and add like a little indent in the middle for the muscle and even though it is like essentially a kids movie. Pixar usually is aimed a little bit towards there, although myself and I know a lot of other adults love Pixar movies. Um, I think it is also good for adults and especially parents to watch with their children because it kind of gives examples of maybe what not to do as a parent. Like for one, the importance of privacy in your children's lives. And I do understand every household is different. Some households don't have good relationships with parents and, and children. I do understand that, but these are just the things that I saw in the movie and in my review is just gonna talk about them. And I do of course understand a lot of these things are a lot easier said than done. But the privacy comes from when Ming, Mei's mom, finds a closed journal and she picks it up and just opens it right away in front of Mei too. Like you don't know what's in there. Maybe it was like, there is like, there's a fine line between privacy and like, safety for your children I think but like things like that private should stay private and obviously like it's a stern controlling mother so <laughs> but something I did find interesting and actually quite insightful because I have been lucky enough to have a very good relationship with my parents is that when the first incident happens which is comes from the lack of privacy which leads to Ming dragging Mei with her to the Daisy Mart to chew out Devin, who literally has not done a single thing wrong, just stood there. <laughs> but what I found really interesting was that Mei actually blamed herself for the outcome of that and not her mother, who we all sort of know overreacted and just handled that situation incorrectly. Because drawing boys and fantasizing about you know, themselves with boys to us and our generation is a pretty natural thing that we kind of know and expect all most, you know, 13 year olds to go through. So even though I cannot relate to that aspect of this movie, I thought it was really insightful and I'm glad they've put it in. And of course it obviously, you know, forwards May's character. And this doesn't take over the whole movie, but there is a portion of the movie where May turning into this red panda is basically, a metaphor for <laughs> magical puberty happening to her. I mean, she's 13, it's gonna happen very soon anyways. And the, the red panda is basically a metaphor for <laughs> the red peony blooming. Thank you, Ming, for giving me that saying. I'm going to use it quite often. And I have to say, props to Pixar for actually showing and depicting pads in a children's animation movie, literally like, Props, man, seriously. And like I said, even though the whole like magical puberty is not the focus of this movie, I am glad that they put it in because it is a natural thing that happens to teenagers, like young 13 year old teenagers and happens to like pretty much everyone. And it also could show that if you are not prepared, like no one has told you beforehand, like what happens to your body, it can freak you out going through puberty and not realizing what exactly it is that's happening to your body. And I don't know if this was the intention of Pixar or not, but I am actually glad that aspect is showed because there are people in situations who they don't have others, parents or guardians or, other, or otherwise, to explain what's going on with them. And so I think seeing this whole aspect in a movie could actually be beneficial to them. And it's not something that has to be like feared. And thank you Pixar for normalizing the use of feminine hygiene products. They're not as scary as everyone seems to think. And again, not sure if this was intentional on Pixar's part, but I also think that just in society in general, there's a little bit of secrecy that goes around when you first start hitting puberty. Like people can usually tell when you're going through it, but it's not really something you want to or do really 
you know, talk about out loud with people, especially when it's something that you're first going through. And especially, you never talked about it in this time period, early 2000s. This movie takes place in 2002 specifically. So I think this movie might also represent the prudeness of especially females going through puberty for the first time. And I think it's depicting that that particular aspect of a young girl's life or any young person's life does not have to be thought of as embarrassing. I mean, it is embarrassing. I've been through it, I know. But <laughs> it's not something that I think people have to be ashamed about. It's a natural occurrence that happens to everyone. And I like that that basically, again, not sure if it's intentional or not, but that this movie is kind of normalizing it in a very interesting, fun, fluffy, big, metaphorical way. Okay, so like I said, puberty's not the whole message of this movie, so that's my take on it. I'm pretty sure my... <laughs> My puberty messages are now complete. But one thing I do love in general anyways is just like mythical, like cultural stories regardless of which culture it comes from. So it's really interesting, at least for me, to see the red panda as well as the whole family myth that comes with May and her family history. And essentially like magic, you know, magic's, magic's cool, so. In this whole movie, the message is essentially not having to hide a part of yourself to fit in with say like your family or society and how hiding you know a part of yourself whichever part of yourself you may be hiding is actually a detriment to your future relationships and just to your own self in general like in order to be truly happy and truly be yourself you should show the world all of yourself even the sides that you don't think other people are going to like about you or the sides that you yourself aren't too happy with. They talk about the red panda having a darkness to it and I think when we express ourselves in society we try to be these happy perfect beings but that's not real. We're not we're not perfect. Human humanity is not perfect at all. And you know, to be 100% to be 100% yourself, I think like the movie said it is very important to also be able to show your dark side, things that people may not want to see in you. But when you find the person who wants all of you, including the darkness, including the panda or no panda, then like those are your people. Because not everyone's gonna like you. Like that's also a message that is not super, I didn't see that too much in this movie, but like that's a life message from, from me. So but what I do love about Pixar in general is that they put so many like real world situations that I think many people can relate to. And I think this is something that all teenagers and even like people my age, like in their 20s can relate to is essentially what I'm gonna call friends versus family. Cause I know it's not like May doesn't love her parents. She obviously does and wants to be a good daughter and seek her mother's approval. You know, that's, that's pretty typical of a young child. But sometimes it is a bit easier to tell your friends more things about yourself than it is your family. And I'm sure there's a psychological thing for that, maybe like pack mentality or something like that. Uh, I am not a psychologist. If you are and you know what I'm trying to talk about, definitely leave a comment because I'd like to, you know, be educated on that too. But I feel like it's essentially going down to no one really understands what you're going through unless you're like in a similar age bracket or situational bracket. And I think in young teenagers' minds, family tends to be more judgmental than your friends are. I mean, there's always a generational gap no matter what age the parent and child is or what generation it is so there's always going to be a difference i think in the way people think whereas your friends they're similar to your age they're they're usually in the same locational vicinity as you especially when if like if you go to like middle school or high school they're going through the same things you are so it's a little bit easier to relate because in your little teenage mind self you, you don't really think that your parents have gone through the same thing at one point in their life and, you know, how are they going to relate if they've never had any problems that you've been having? Now, this movie is also pretty comedic, which I really liked. Uh, the whole hustle scene where May's hustling the panda, I think was super funny, but I also liked that it showed that when you do eventually show all of yourself, people will actually usually like you for you. Like, an example, Tyler. He is the typical insecure 13 year old boy who essentially you think has it all, nice clothes, rich family, you know, you seem to think that he's the popular person, but 
you know, it's kind of sad when Tyler thinks he needs the panda to show up at his birthday party because people won't come to his party otherwise. Which, like, he kind of did that to himself because he was definitely a jerk, not not downplaying that at all. He was definitely a jerk, and so, like, kind of deserved no one coming to his birthday party anyways. But, like, I like how it shows that, like, not only are girls quite insecure about themselves, but boys at that time, at that age, are also very insecure. And for the most part, if, if a 13-year-old boy is being rude, he's insecure. He's still a jerk, but he's insecure. Now, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but when the aunties and the grandma showed up, it kind of reminded me a little bit of the movie Crazy Rich Asians. Even the grandma's look was very similar to the grand to the mother in Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> also representative of like, of like large families. My mom's side of the family is Italian, so that's a very large side of the family too. So seeing that is kind of cool as well, because I can relate to that part of it. And the whole family, like when they're all surrounding May, and they're like, oh, you grew, and like, no, you shrunk. Like, oh, you lost weight, and you gained weight. Like, that's very, I feel like I've definitely had that experience being passed around from like great aunt to first cousin to, you know, actual aunt in <laughs> in like the whole, in the whole family when you eventually get together for reunions or, or funerals or whatnot, or weddings. This was the only time you really ever see your whole extended family. And I definitely know that they were paying homage to anime, especially like when the girls see a guy they're into and they get the starry eyes, but also when they're trying to save the mom when Ming is in giant panda form. And one of the aunties is doing the Naruto run, like, thank you. <laughs> but paying homage to anime, like, I know I've never really gotten into anime too much, but I know a lot of my friends are and they always talk about like, Dragon Ball Z and Naruto and now all the other anime that the world has expanded into and so it's just really nice to see that you know these young girls are in all these different fandoms like they love boy bands they're awkward they're dorky like in the past girls I think have been depicted as these like pretty things that you know they just like princesses and Barbies and you know they're kind of perfect even as like a 12 year old but what I like about this movie is that they have interests they're obsessed with boys as they usually are at 13 or obsessed with whoever you like you know at that age you may not know it or not but whatever but it's just nice to see them have these like you know expressive and silly and goofy facial expressions because like i was like that as a young teenager you know i wasn't playing with barbies i had this i had a white power ranger action figure i brought it everywhere it's the only one i had <laughs> so i know that's not this is not the first movie that has happened and Kanto, I think, did a good job with the depicting, you know, young women as being their goofy, you know, authentic selves. So, you know, through the whole animation world, you know, I think that's a new thing that's happening and I appreciate it very much. So thank you for doing that. And I also like to know throughout the generations, this red panda is something that the women of the Lee family have essentially banished and hidden away. And I like that in order to save the mom, everyone sort of sacrificed that part of themselves to, you know, in order to save her. So, so it's almost like in order to, you know, save the mom, they had to, you know, sacrifice the image that they tried for generations to maintain and essentially like lose control and show all the sides to themselves, show their own red panda. And I like how it depicted that, like, you know, like I said earlier, when, you know, you think your parents don't understand a single thing about you, that they haven't gone the same thing through, that they haven't gone through the same things you have, but by the end of the movie, May realizes that her mom probably had it a bit harder than she did. And that all the things that May have, has gone through has always wanted to do. Like, those are the same things that her mom, you know, didn't get a chance to do, even though she may have wanted it. And again, I know not all families are like this. You know, this is kind of a perfect character arc as most, is like as most animation movies kind of are. And so I get that, you know, sometimes family dynamics don't work out like that at all. I totally understand that. But again, this is just for this movie in particular. As much as I love the movie, one thing I would have liked to see, um, and actually have been done a little bit differently, is I honestly would have liked if the mom decided to keep her panda. Because at the end, when they're all in like the spiritual world bamboo forest, and they, they again like, give up their panda, there's like a moment where you kind of think the mom might keep it, and I really wish she did. Because it seems like Ming, May's mom, never got the chance 
to have the childhood that she wanted. You know, she grew up with strict parents. I think it would have been nice for Ming to learn how to coexist with all of herself because I feel like whenever she, like her growing up, I feel like all the time she was hiding that part of herself. Even, even not even the red panda part, just like parts of her to be this dutiful daughter that her own mother expected her to be. So I just kind of wish it would be like, she, it, was, it would be like she would finally like come into herself in a way. And I kind of wish that was like, it was like, cause it's like mother, cause it is like a mother daughter movie as well. And I feel like, you know, that would have, I think sealed their relationship. Cause it's not like, they don't have a bad relationship. I don't think, um, obviously it, as you grow older, it gets a little bit more rocky. Um, but I think to like reconnect, I think it would've been really nice. And I mean, you sort of do get that because Ming had to keep her panda in May's Tamagotchi. So like she's feeding and nurturing and caring for the red panda in the Tamagotchi um, device. So I guess in a sense, it's like nurturing the other side of her, which is really nice. But again, that's like my one, the one, if I had to change anything about the movie, that's the one thing I would want to change. Um, but again, that's my own opinion. If you guys relate a little bit more to this movie and you think that um, essentially Ming still giving up the panda is a good option, then like that's really cool. And I'm glad that you like that option. But I did like that Ming learned to be less controlling and being able to see her own daughter of who Mei really is and not really like a carbon copy of Ming herself. And I did like how Tyler went from, you know, being an insecure boy to part of the gang. It also shows that like, you know, once you find people who accept you for you, you know, you'll, you'll be happier and probably less of a jerk. So that being said for the movie, I loved it. And even though I couldn't relate to 100% of the things that were depicted in this movie, there are still many other things that I can relate to. Like being 13, puberty and life changes, and even though the first generation aspect didn't happen directly to me, it happened to my parents. So, you know, through stories and, you know, examples, like, you know, I, I do get a bit of what's going on. And even if I can't relate, or even if you can't relate to this movie, I hope you can at least appreciate it. And I hope that you gained an insight to put someone who maybe does come from this kind of background or maybe you, you maybe that maybe that stuff didn't happen to you when you were 13 but i hope you can appreciate and be insightful to that these things did happen to someone else but honestly like this movie you know i love pixar one of my favorite studios so like 9.5 out of 10 again my only critique would be with the whole the mom aspect but that's not really anything major just my own creative mind is kind of like well, that'd be kind of cool if this happened essentially and again, I know this is not, this isn't like a Chinese movie. It's just something that happens to a Chinese Canadian person, but I love that it is more representative. So people who are Chinese American, Chinese Canadian, you know, whoever, whatever can see this and see themselves in this person. And maybe even if you're in this situation, you can see yourself in the situation and it might help you. And who doesn't love giant big red pandas? I mean, come on. But guys, that has been my review for turning red. I hope you guys liked the movie. I hope you guys liked this review. And if you haven't seen the movie, I really recommend going to see it. But turning red has been reeled in. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Comment, is this a movie that you guys can relate to? Um, if you wanna share personal stories, feel free. I'd love to hear them. And be sure to subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you know when I upload future Pixar review videos. But guys, that's all I've got for you today. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.